Hey, I'm Ted. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel at first. In today's video, I'm going to show you uh, the components of your air brake system and how to test it to make sure it's functioning properly, and that will also uh, get you through the test if you want to get your air brake endorsement. So stick around. school buses come with air brakes. Um, you have to check state to state whether or not your state requires a brake, an air brake endorsement for your RVs. It, it varies. Um, and there's a lot of sort of debate about whether, you know, if it's not a commercial vehicle, do any of the commercial laws apply? And so you have to check, check state to state to find out if you do. Um, quick disclaimer, uh, I'm not a mechanic. I can't go into the great details of how the little components of the air brake systems work. Um, but I do have a, a CDL with an air brake endorsement, so I've passed the test at least once. And so I'm going to show you uh, later on in the video kind of the, the steps to going about that. Okay, so the components of your air brake system. Actually pretty close in many ways to a conventional hydraulic system that you have in a regular car. So you have your service brake pedal, basically your brake pedal. Uh, you also have your parking brake. A lever, which you, you know all vehicles will have, whether or not they're air brakes or not. Uh, from there, you go to your compressor, which uh, located in the engine compartment of most buses, I believe. That the compressor will actually pump air uh, through the governor, which regulates how much pressure you get and pressure into the tank. Um, many tanks are com the the newer ones now are sort of three sections. You have your your wet tank, which uh, any condensation and moisture in the air will hopefully condense there and not get into your primary tank. Your primary tank is the biggest part of the tank. It holds enough air for about you know eight to ten breakings, they say. And then you have a secondary tank as sort of a backup emergency. Those tanks also have drains. Uh, the older models, uh, you'd have to drain them manually. Most of the newer ones sort of automatically take their water out. Um, I do go through mine every couple weeks and just sort of turn the, the cocks on them and open them up just to be sure. From the air tanks you have air lines that will deliver uh, air to the brake chambers. In the brake chambers you have springs which operate uh, your emergency parking and the uh, parking brakes. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. Um, also you have you know, the, the just the service, normal service brakes where you um, really push the pedal or release air, push the, uh, the drums up, up, up uh, push the pads up against the drums and slow and stop your vehicle and uh, follow those according to plan. Operating air brakes is really pretty much the same thing as operating normal brakes. I would say that uh, you know when you do the CDL license they'll tell you um, that because uh, heat is a big uh, destroyer of brakes or kind of let make them ineffective so uh, one thing especially driving a heavy vehicle if you're going downhill um, rather than constantly putting your foot on the brake you're supposed to you know, push that push that brake pedal down pretty firmly, um, get, try to get your speed to five miles an hour below where you want it to be, then take your foot off the brake and allow you to gradually pick up speed a little bit again. That will give your brakes a chance to cool, then depress and then repeat that as you need to. If you're on a steep grade, you want to consider shifting to a lower gear and that will help use the engine to, um, to, break, the, uh, to break the vehicle as well so you don't destroy those brakes with heat. Okay, before you operate your vehicle with air brakes, it's a good idea to check them to make sure they're all working. Uh, and then this is sort of the check too, you get tested on if you go take your air brake endorsement um, test, you know, for your CDL. Uh, so the first thing, I, I've already chalked the, uh, chalked the wheels. Uh, it's pouring rain out there, so I'm not going to go out there and show you that. Um, but we're going to start up the vehicle first. So I can already hear the buzzer going off, which means uh, if you can check to see the uh, air pressure down here, it's only at about 40 pounds. So we're going to allow that pressure to build up and uh, we're going to listen for the compressor to shut off and make a big sound at about at 120 pounds per square inch. So that's what we're going to check on now. Sometimes you can kind of rev the engine up a little bit to help it, like 1500 RPMs. Some buses uh, have two different dials, two different gauges for different uh, for the different tanks, for your primary tank and your secondary tank. My bus has got actually two needles on the same gauge. Ah, I heard the big psh at uh, 120 psi. So that's good. Okay, so 
my buzzer stopped going off and uh, I'm up to 120 PSI. I heard the big psh, the compressor, so I know that the compressor's working off. We also have this thing called the wigwag. Wigwag! And that's a mechanical backup system for your gauges so that this will pop up when you're at appropriate uh, uh, air pressure and it will drop down when uh, you don't have enough pressure. Okay, once you're up to pressure, I'm going to pump the brakes, uh, bring the pressure down to 100 to make sure that the compressor kicks back on. <laughs> Wigwag drops, then we're down below pressure. Good, good Psh, sound, we're back up to pressure. So now you can turn the engine off. And then we're going to time this for one minute to make sure that the pressure doesn't drop more than three PSI in that minute. So usually you have stopwatch or use your phone. I don't think I'm going to sit here for the entire minute for the purposes of this video. Pressure seems to be holding just fine. After the one minute's passed, you step on the brakes and hold them. Check your temperature, uh, check your pressure again on the gauge, time it for one minute and make sure it doesn't drop more than four PSI in over the next minute. Okay, so we're gonna turn the key back on. And release the parking brake. So now we're gonna pump the pedal again, get the pressure down to make sure that the buzzer goes off at 60 PSI. Remember Happy Days? Remember that episode where Potsy's trying to learn the blood system and he has to sing the song, pump off, pump, pump off your blood. Buzzer went on at 60, perfect, exactly what we want. Now I'm going to continue pumping down to make sure that the emergency brakes kick on. Could happen somewhere between 40 and 60 PSI. Look, there goes the uh, Emergency brakes, so that's good. Test is good. I'm going to restart the engine. Rev it up to again about 1500 RPMs and time it. Make sure the pressure comes up to within 45, comes up to 120 within 45 seconds. Temperature's right, I mean, keep it safe. Keep, keep, Keep saying temperature. We're good. Pressure's rising. We're back up. We're in good shape there. Okay, so next we're gonna tug against the brakes, make sure they're working. So we'll put it in gear. I'm on the emergency brakes now. Perfect. Bus isn't going. Release the parking brake. And we accelerate to five miles an hour and then apply the brakes again. Uh, my truck's parked right in front of me, so I'm not actually gonna do that at this time. But yeah, just accelerate uh, five miles an hour, put the brakes on and make sure the bus doesn't pull from side to side. Okay, that's how you test your air brake system. Hopefully that's been helpful. You can, you can find any of this stuff on like CDL guides online. You can even take a bunch of practice quizzes uh, in order to help if you want to pass that test. But it's always just a good idea safety wise. Obviously you got a 26,000 pound vehicle hurling down the highway. You want to make sure that you can slow down and stop. So again, hopefully it's been helpful. Uh, hit that like button if it has. Subscribe. Do all those things you do. I appreciate you watching. And check in next time. We're getting some exciting things going on with the bus. We're going to put some insulation in the ceiling. Then when the things are going to really start to close up. Thanks again, appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.